So thanks for you both uh, to come to this interview online. Thank you this for having us. Um, we'll talk about your new album and about the band as it developed, I think. Uh, first of all, the first question is from Matt Hein. I think it's, you can answer it better. Um, the whole band Delane has changed except you. So so how did, uh, how did this happen? What was the reason for this? Yeah, well, let's keep it short because otherwise you're going to get a, a long video. Um, well, the thing with Delane is that Delane consists out of two parts, and that is uh, the people who make the music, like the, the album, and the people who, who uh, play live. And of course, there are people that play live who also make the album, but not all of them, and also the other way around. Um, there's also somebody I always write the music with, Goose, and he never plays live. So that part is the same, and it has always been like that. Um, um, and then there are um, uh, new band members, and there are band members that were in Delane before with our album April Rain, Human Contradiction, and uh, our first album Lucidity. Um, but indeed, the, the lineup that was there previously, also with our singer Charlotte, that uh, they, they are gone. That's correct. Because um, uh, just before COVID, we were doing so much that I got in a burnout. And, and I know that things had to change. And uh, so we started talking about it. And, and what I wanted to change is that I wanted to play less for a little bit uh, to be able to recover um uh, and perhaps even skip a tour or something um and uh i had uh, delaying consisted how do you say it's a technical story but delaying is also a company because it's our our living and charlotte and me were in that company and the the guys weren't and the guys kind of wanted to to change things completely and uh uh, we talked about it and we couldn't figure that out. And um, Charlotte's position was, um, if you can't figure it out with, with the guys, then then I'll, or any the other way around, then I'll rather uh, focus on my solo career and, and then, then stop with delaying. And then that's it. And so we, I tried to figure it out with the guys, um, but it basically came down to that they uh yeah they wanted me out that's kind of what what it, what it uh, boiled down to but the thing is that they didn't write the music and they never did perhaps for five percent or something but um the music was written by me and Goose and also charlotte uh she um did all the lyrics uh since uh album one one album one not all the lyrics but most of the lyrics she did and um and at a certain point also contributed with the music part um but the guys didn't so the thing was if they would take over yeah that, it would completely change the music but still um i at a certain point i offered them to continue and and i would get out so i would i would retreat and do my own thing but uh yeah we couldn't we couldn't figure the out the conditions and how to do it and in the end i'm actually relieved that we didn't because um it's sad how it went but um if it would have gone like that the music would have gone radically different because also who's would quit then uh, so yeah the songwriters would be out um so after that i thought okay uh, they are gone and then charlotte uh, left as well to to indeed focus on her solo career what to do um and i thought first well perhaps you know, because the songwriting is still there, perhaps you can can continue as a project so it doesn't completely disappear. Um, but then also the ex-band members uh, got involved and there was so much delaying DNA still present uh, that, yeah, we, we kind of developed into continuing as a band. Um, uh, so here we are. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's where Diana came in, I think. So how yes. did you yeah. meet up? Uh, how did this go? What was your oh, it was for? it was really simple actually. I well, I knew I, I heard the news about the split, and uh, I actually almost stopped singing at the time. Like 
I, I, I was focusing on other things on my own, on my recipe channel and other things. And, um, but I, I saw a post on their Instagram account, I think it was. And um, I was like, I, I, I will just leave a comment and, and see what happens. <laughs> and the comment was, hey, I, can I audition as a singer? Because I, I had no idea if they were still looking for a singer or if they found one already. So I just left the comment there mostly as a joke. <laughs> and then eventually, after a couple of days, Martin reached out to me. And he uh, he told me, yeah, of course, you can audition. And he uh, sent me some material to sing on. And uh, yeah, then, then we kept, you know, talking through email and and uh, we kept in touch. So, yeah, that's how it happened, basically. <laughs> Very cool. And you, Martin, uh, what was the reason that Diana was uh, the right singer for you? Well, that's really uh, funny. Um, I was looking online for singers on YouTube, for example, people who do covers and And I also stumbled upon uh, uh, Diana with, with some covers and, and I absolutely loved her voice. And I wrote down her name and I thought, well, perhaps I should, I should contact her and, uh, and let her sing some um, Delane songs and see how it would fit. And uh, well, then as Diana told me, we, we, uh, we uh, came into contact and she sang a couple songs and I was blown off my chair and with, <laughs> with me also Goos and um, uh, also our uh, guitar player Sander and our drummer, uh, our drummer Sander and our guitar player Ronald. And yeah, we were, we were completely, um, we were so surprised and her voice fits so well and she has her own character. Um, uh, but It, 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 it fits the music so incredibly well. So for us, it was kind of a no-brainer. Yeah, cool. That sounds really cool. And and how have been the reactions? Uh, three months ago, you were announced, Diana, I think, with the first single. Yes, What exactly, have the yeah. fans said? Oh, the response was incredible. I mean, beyond expectations, <laughs> to be honest. Um, we... Uh, We had a chance to play a, a couple tryout shows before the single was released. So we, I, I met some Delane fans before that. And even at the tryout shows, they were so nice to me and they welcomed me with open arms. I was really, really impressed by, by how they reacted. Yeah. And still to this day, uh, they, react, they reacted so positively to our second single as well. And... And still to the quest and the curse, yeah, people are really nice, which, you know, nowadays it's it's not a given, you know. <laughs> yeah. I think so. I think many people are somehow skeptical when a new singer comes on, especially on a band like this. And then uh, it's good to, good to hear that people accept you. I think it's yeah, not, yeah. not always like this. No, I, I totally Nitrid, for example, I have struggled, I think, with every new singer. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And um, I think, well, I think Delane has built such a, a, a cool fan base throughout the years with such good people. And uh, and this shows right now, I think. I also want to add something to that. that you know, Charlotte is, was also really, and still is, a really good singer. She has so much talent. And um, it's, of course, very difficult to find a successor uh, for, uh, for her. And people are really attached to Charlotte. So, um, yeah, I, I really have so much respect for Diana that she, she had the courage to, to, uh, to jump into the water, so to say. And um, uh, so, yeah, I'm just extremely grateful. Yeah. And uh, Diana, you mentioned the new single. It's uh, Beneath. I think it's yeah. four, or five, four or five days now since it was released. Um, yeah, we re we just released it. Yeah, it's brand new, super fresh. <laughs> yeah. Um, first of all, as Charlotte has uh, written most lyrics in the past, did you write any lyrics for the new material? For this song, yeah. for example? Uh, I did actually not for Beneath. Uh, Robin wrote the lyrics for Beneath. Yeah. But I did uh, contribute on other lyrics on the album. I think two songs and and other bits and pieces on other songs so yeah mm -hmm. I, i i did i i had a chance to do that as well which is really nice because 
I, I used to, I, I've always been writing lyrics and my own songs, but it's, it's nice to get to, you know, express myself, especially in this album as well, because it's such an important um, chapter in, in Delane's um, career. So it's, it's really nice. And uh, regarding the song, The Beneath, um, what's the background of the song? So if you didn't write the lyrics, how do you feel? Do you feel it? Oh, so, well, actually, this song was um, part of my audition together with The Quest and the Curse and Masters of Destiny and uh, Burning Bridges. Um, I think it was the last song that I recorded before Martijn uh, picked me. Um, so right when I when I got it, I was I was blown away, and it was still a demo. So a lot of um, a lot of choirs weren't there, a lot of um, you know orchestrations and, and keyboards weren't there already because it was a demo version. But it already sounded so good, and 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 the chorus as well. It was it was I was blown away by by the vibe of the song in general and the lyrics as well. I think the way Robin writes really. Um, connects with me because she has this um, dark uh, vibe to her writing, which I, I can I can relate to because I, I write like that too. So it's 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 really cool. And also the way she, you know, uh, the way she wrote the lyrics for Beneath, I think it, it portrays in a in a really nice way the, the coming back of the of the band. Like I have returned from down under. Uh, which is the first lyric that I sing. It's it's really cool the way she she wrote that. She's a really, I think she's a brilliant, brilliant uh, uh, lyric lyric writer. Yeah, well, ly lyricist, I believe you can, I can say. I think both could be yeah. okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's this video for it, and I think the video is already connected to the album because there's lots of water in the video. And the album is called uh, Dark Water. So is there any twist in this? Is there any reason you made this video this way? Um, good question. I think I think it's um, we didn't do it on purpose, I think, but the way the way the videos connect to each other, it, it, it's a really cool coincidence, I think. I think my time can can agree with this. <laughs> yes, no, absolutely. <laughs> that, Absolutely. It, it, it's, um, you know, you tr always try to find connections when you write an album and Dark Waters is a perfect metaphor indeed for, yeah, you know, that we return after um, a, a difficult period and I wasn't sure that if we would return. And um, uh, yeah, so this comes back in in, uh, in more tracks and uh, uh, so therefore it's, it's, it's really fitting. Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. And yeah, uh, the title also gives me the feeling of, of that there are lots of dark waters you swam to, you, you had to get over. So what is the general idea behind the album? Is there any any red line, any even a concept, or is it just there's not really a concept like a general theme. Uh so each song stands on its own. But of course, when you when you make make an album together <laughs> uh, there is a certain state of mind you're in and um uh, so uh, it's not a coincidence that some things return in songs because when you're inspired then then you can find this back in in the material so um if, if we would uh for example add a song from eight years ago uh, that would be kind of a strange uh, duck in the pond to keep it mm -hmm. with, with the water theme <laughs> <laughs> Um, funny thing, your last album was uh, Apocalypse and Chill in 2020, just before the uh, pandemic. I thought the title was a little bit, um, how we call it, uh, prophetic, wasn't it? Yes, <laughs> yeah, it sure was. <laughs> I mean, COVID happened, uh, the whole band lineup kind of collapsed, uh, so it was really dark times. And um, uh, so, um, yeah, this is... Uh, were pretty symbolic in hindsight. And uh, if everything changed within the band, what's uh, the connection between the albums? Is there any? Uh, yes. Uh, well, well, in terms of theme, I don't know about that. But of course, in terms of the makers, since Guus and I 
uh, also wrote the majority of the music uh, uh, of uh, Apocalypse and Chill together with Charlotte. Uh, yeah, Guus and I also wrote the, the uh, majority of this album. So the style is the same, the sound is the same. Um, that's the connection. But in terms of theme, I don't know if there, there's, there's a theme in that regard. Uh, and, but in general, we like dark, we like dark themes and we like contrast and with Apocalypse and Chill, that contrast is there. And, uh, and, and with, with Dark Waters is there as well in, in the music. And we like, you know, sometimes we like cheesy music parts and sometimes we like more dark parts. So there always is a, has been a lot of contrast in the lane with, and playing, playing with darkness and light. Yeah. yeah. That brings me to another question I had. Um, I think the kind of music you make uh, has to need or needs a big uh, level of professionality of, of, of hard work of concentration. But how do you get a balance? And you said cheesy with uh, like fun, like laughing, like like uh, getting the dark and the light side of life together. Uh, how you do that? Um, it, it's to be honest, it's not a delib deliberate thing. Uh, it's, I think it's, you have to go with the flow and have fun when you create and write music. Because if you don't, how can you expect listeners to enjoy what you make and, and in a way have fun? The word fun might not be entirely uh, apt, but, but you know what I mean. Um, uh, so it's, there's not a deliberate... I just always loved uh, contrast in music, you know, uh, having, having really light stuff and also... Uh, but also really dark stuff and, and life this comes back because delaying is sometimes life also a party band we have parties you know we have very poppy songs uh but we also have growls and 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 really dark stuff so um also life this this uh, we play with that yeah, as you mentioned growls uh there's paolo ribaldini ribaldini uh as a guest singer on two songs how did this collaboration come up um, well, in the period that I wasn't sure uh, how delaying could continue, um, I uh, also was in contact with uh, Anton, and he is the uh, guitar player and songwriter of Beast in Black. Uh, and um, we always stayed in touch. We toured together and we toured with Sabaton. Um, and uh, he knew a singer um, that was Paolo. Uh, and I never really worked on um, such an intensive basis with a male singer. Of course, we worked with Marco Hitala, but that was only for one or, or at most two songs. Uh, but with Paolo, we really worked intensively in, and we agreed that we would uh, just see how it would develop. And um, uh, so on the album, Paolo is heard on, on quite a few songs, actually. Um, um, but uh, yeah, so we explored this and, and with Beneath, um, it, when he it came down to the Netherlands uh, and, and we, we tweaked on, on, on the song and the chorus, yeah, I discovered that he sounds amazing uh, on this chorus and that the combination with Diana is absolutely perfect. And so this is a bit how it developed. And, and he's um, a, a guest on our album, but um, it was, it started in such a way that we, kind of would, didn't know how it would develop. It could be a band member, could be a guest, or it could be something in between. And it's still something that we're exploring, actually. Uh, because at one end, you know, he has his stuff to do and, and uh, you know, his other things in life. Uh, so we just take it, um, uh, we just take it, uh, uh, how you say, uh, uh, by time we just see how it goes and uh, but yeah it, it's it's working really well with him and he was there with our first live shows as well um so uh, we're really happy to have him aboard i'm really honored he's a fantastic singer yeah. the other uh, guest i've seen was a uh, root root um from within temptation i know you have a deeper connection to the head band i've seen them last weekend <laughs> it was really cool um how did this uh, how did this come up so what was the idea to bring him in, especially on this song? 
Actually, it was a practical reason because Guus was um, abroad and we had had the deadline to meet. <laughs> and um, and I knew, of course, Ruth. And I called him like, hey, we really have to, to record this song. And I only know a few people who could be capable in doing that. And you're on the top of my list. Do you have time? And it was just before they uh, would go on a USA tour in September. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he recorded that song. And uh, I'm really happy with it. And uh, and it's kind of, you know, I know Ruud um, not really well, but I know him uh, for years. Uh, it's not that, that we play games every week uh, with a drink or something, but he's in that band for a very long time. And and indeed, the connection with, with Intemptation runs very deep for me. There's family in there. And so I knew him for years already. So it's really nice to be able to to work with people that you know for such a long time. and and kind of come full, full circle and um especially you mentioned uh the tour you are going on tour on on i think april it starts if i'm right uh so what do you have to prepare to get this this band or this uh project you now have ready for live playing that is thank you, a good question especially for diana since she <laughs> yeah. has, it's her first tour <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's gonna be my first first ever tour in in Europe, and um, well, I can speak for for my own perspective how I'm getting ready for the tour. Um, of course, vocally, um, you know, rehearsing and especially gaining that muscle memory for for both the old songs and the new ones from the album, and um, just getting ready also physically because that's important as well your body needs to be ready to you know play every night and and, and breathe especially for a singer <laughs> so that's how i get ready but also mentally you know get ready to uh to just emerge myself in, in the songs and, and give the best performance that i that i can give yeah that's another good point i think uh, it will be hard for you to, to get all the old songs uh, onto your repertoire, but also to get into contact with most of the fans. Well, will, won't it? Because I thought about, um, especially in your situation, you have even to mm-hmm. connect more to them than Charlotte has because everyone knew her and you have mm-hmm. to go out, uh, talk to them, maybe give some autographs or selfies. Yeah. Is it like that? Yeah. Yeah, of course. And actually that already happened on the on the on our show on the 4th of November. After the show, I got to meet so many of, of, of the people that were at the show and I got I got to talk to them and uh, it was really nice to have that contact with them. Also because I used to go to a lot of metal shows and rock shows and, and obviously I stopped doing that when COVID started. So it was really nice to have that contact back again. And that, you know, that vibe, that um, that feeling when you go to a show and, and you get to meet new people and, and just hear the music. And it was, it's a, it was such a special moment. So I know on tour, it's going to be even more special for so many reasons. So I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I think we have a lot of material now. But one last question. We have uh, already, Advent has started at one time. So, um, what do you think about Christmas? Do you feel it? Uh, and and if so, how do you celebrate it? Oh, I do. I do celebrate Christmas. I've always celebrated Christmas. Um, although I do get the feeling that as like the more you grow up, the the less magical it gets. And I don't know why. <laughs> uh, maybe because when you're an adult, you have all these responsibilities, and you, you know, you think less of. I don't know, of, of, of the magic in general of, of Christmas, but I still, I still feel it, you know, and especially when, uh, when I get to see my family, I think that's, that's, that's the feeling you get, you know, Christmas with family and, and also friends and, and cooking together and just having a, a good time. And how about you, Martin? For me, oh yeah, I love Christmas. Uh, of course, as I said before, I'm married to somebody from America and their Christmas is a very important thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and um, uh, no, I, I love the vibe. And indeed, um, uh, 
uh, like meeting up with friends, having a nice drink. I, I might even smoke a cigar if I'm really mm -hmm. silly. I do that like a special occasions and um, yeah, just enjoy. Uh, and sometimes we do that here in the Netherlands, but sometimes we also go to America to uh, Robin's family. And uh, uh, yeah, also this time I'm really looking forward to the to Christmas time. Yeah, cool. That's really cool. And I think it is a good point to end this interview. So thank you for everything. Thank I you. hope you enjoyed it a little bit. Yeah, yeah cool. I did. Absolutely. It was fun. Yeah. Thank you so much.